Get a deeper insight into your fat test, which is what we're being paid for. Dare to use it. Okay, just just try. Just try something, ask questions, get the information you need to start working with it, and try to have that value change. Welcome to the Rumination Podcast, presented by Jeffel Nutrition. I'm your host, Vicky Brisson, and today we'll be discussing de novo fatty acids, their impact on production, and solutions to reduce their variation in the herd. With me today to discuss this topic is Dr. Deborah Sanchi, Director of Innovation and Development at Lactinet. Dr. Sanchi holds a bachelor's degree in animal science and a master's degree in dairy cattle nutrition from McGill, as well as a PhD in animal science from Université Laval. Since 2010, she's been the nutrition and management expert for Valacta's research and development team, and she's held the position of Director of Innovation and Development at Lactinet since September 2019. Her duties there include supporting advisors, carrying out research projects, developing new tools, and transferring knowledge to producers and employees alike. Deborah has the scientific mindset that comes from her studies, but she's also got the practical side from her experience on the family farm. Deborah is an associate professor in the Department of Animal Sciences at McGill University, Université Laval, the University of Manitoba, and the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine at Université de Montréal. Welcome to the show, Dr. Sanchi. Thank you very much, Vicky. Thank you very much for having me here uh, with you today. So as an introduction, can you explain what de novo fatty acid synthesis is? Sure. Um, I'll try to put that very visual and very simple. I like to imagine things. Um, So to me, like the fatty acids, it's basically just like if we would take that black box of the fat, the milk fat test and open it up and look at what it what's inside of it. Uh, So if we take, for example, a herd that is at 4% fat, if we open it up, we can see what makes up that 4% fat and see where those fatty acids come from. So if we look at a general perspective, there's probably over 400 different fatty acids in it. Uh, But we we can group them in different categories, which help us better understand the metabolism of the cow, how the feed contributes to the fat, and then obviously how we can also work on changing that fat content and how we can improve uh, the performance of our cows or our herds uh, overall. So the de novo fatty acids is one of those groups of fatty acids that we find in the total fat. It represents, depending on the herds and the cows, roughly between 25-30% of the total fat. And those are the fatty acids that are synthesized in the mammary gland of the cow. So they will be made out of the rumen fermentation, volatile fatty acids that get to the mammary gland and get reassembled in different chain lengths. Those are extremely good indicators of rumen health. That's why the big focus on the fatty acid profile is on this specific group of fatty acids. The two other main groups of fatty acids that we hear about are uh, the preformed fatty acids, which will come either from the ration, so the diet composition and the type of fats coming in, um, as well as body mobilization. So for example, early lactation cows will have a lot of preformed because they are mobilizing uh, their body fat. Uh, The third group finally is the mixed origin fatty acids. So those can come from both sides, either being synthesized de novo in the mammary gland or be preformed in the ration or or in the body reserves. And those will be the ones with the 16 carbon. So our palmitic acid, for example, would be one of the examples there. I'd like to dig a bit deeper into some parts of your answer. What impact does that milk fat composition have on the cow and What are the periods when fatty acid profile is more likely to vary? What can we learn from that? Um, Sure. I I think it's very interesting to look at it from a cow side and also from a herd side, right? So if we take the cow example, um, a cow in very early lactation, we all know that she's using her body reserves to compensate for that very high demand for milk production. Uh, In that case, a big chunk of her fat Uh, content will be preformed fatty acids. So in very early lactation, we see roughly 50 or sometimes even slightly more as a percentage of her fat being the preformed fatty acids. And in that case, the de novo will be very low and increase slowly over the first 45, 50, 60 days of of lactation. 
Um, this provides some sort of insight into how well the transition is going and how we could improve the status of the cows there. But it's also a normal process, which we need to understand and respect to some extent, because those cows do use some body reserves to push more uh, into the milk production. So that's, that's a normal process. Um, if we look at it on a herd level, when we do some ration change, when the forage digestibility changes, but we don't notice too much, all those little effects can also have an impact on the de novo content of the bulk tank sample. And in that case, because bulk tank samples are often analyzed very frequently, then we can get a rapid insight into something that we might not have noticed on the farm level. So in those instances that monitoring the de novo might be a management tool for the whole herd to make sure that we maintain that paycheck constant uh, by maintaining a fat test uh, as high as we want it to be. Speaking of management, knowing that the fatty acid profile of milk matters, what can we do to promote the production of de novo fatty acids? Um, so as I said earlier on, the de novo fatty acids are the result of being produced in the mammary gland from rumen volatile fatty acids. So everything that we can do to maximize rumen volatile fatty acids will, ha will have a positive impact. Uh, so we often focus on the ration. So of course, having a highly digestible ration, well-balanced with all the nutrients that are required is really important. But we need to keep in mind everything around it. So all the environment and all the factors affecting feeding behavior, for example. Um, that would mean access to the feed bunk, but that feed bunk needs to have something in it as well, right? So having ration ready for the cows, a uniform ration, uh, well distributed, that the cow cannot sort too much, having water access, maximize the comfort so that she can lay down and ruminate because that's when she produces those volatile fatty acids. Uh, the environment around her, so everything related to uh, temperature, humidity, making sure that we lower that environmental pressure on the cow so that she can maximize the time she's spending laying down in that stall and ruminating. Um, well, uh, like the, the forages, make sure that they taste good so that she wants to eat more, because obviously the more she eats, the more volatile fatty acids she can produce and transform that into, into the milk fat and the de novo fatty acids more specifically. So it's an overall approach, an overall balance in all those components. Uh, everything that affects what she can take in and then process as efficiently as possible. We know that there needs to be feed in front of the cows at the bunk. Can you expand on specific nutritional solutions that our listeners may want to consider if de novo fatty acid synthesis or just the milk fatty acid profile is a challenge that they're currently dealing with? Um, sure. So the way we train our people, and I, I just want to mention, we have a lot of information that is available directly on, on the website as well to help understand and find solutions because it's going to be very herd specific. But when I look at a herd, I look at the fat test, the protein test, because those are values we know and we, we handle very well. I look at the MUN value because to me, it's important to look at the overall protein balance as well. And then I go and take a look at the fatty acid profiles. I always start with the de novo, then look at the mix, then look at the preform. That's my way of addressing a report. Um, so if the de novo is low, that's by far every single time the first one I'm going to attack and try to improve. Um, so looking at the management strategy, as we just highlighted, everything around the cow, and then making sure that she eats enough of a well-balanced ration. So the, the lack might be in different areas. Some might need more, more sugar, more starch. Uh, some might have too much and might need more effective fiber. So it's finding what is causing the issue uh, to help optimize that rumen function. Uh, some might need a, uh, sometimes it's a silage, the quality of the silage that is impacting rumen, and from, rumen fermentation, sorry, because of, of some uh, spoilage or whatever. So finding what is affecting that rumen function is the key to bring the de novo fatty acids up higher. And then as we look at the different types of fatty acids, then we, we, may, might, we may find some other options that might uh, need to be considered. Uh, so for example, if the preformed fatty acids, if they are slightly low, it might just be because we have a high corn salad ration. So those herds, that's just what they're feeding and it's a normal benchmark for this type of ration. If those preformed fatty acids are getting extremely low, those could sometimes be the type of cows who will react very efficiently to some uh, energy 
additives that will help provide those fatty acids that they require to make sure that they can maintain uh, their own physiological needs in addition to all uh, the energy they require to produce the milk fat. So, of course, from hearing you speak, there's lots of things that can impact the level of de novo fatty acids produced. But something else beyond just the amount that's produced is also that variation in fatty acid levels. So what are the impacts of that variation in fatty acids? And yeah, how can we address it? Um, so very good question. I think, again, there's uh, some information on the cow level. There's some information on the bulk tank level. Um, I like to work on the bulk tank level first because it's every second day in our case. So it helps to get a very accurate and up-to-date overview. However, the downside is that it's only on a farm level. It's an average and I have no idea of the distribution of it. So I think a combination of the two uh, helps to address um, all this. So obviously, I'm talking more about uh, bulk tank samples and let's say, for example, uh, individual milk recording samples that could contribute the cow data. Um, so when there's a lot of variation on the bulk tank, uh, we see it a lot in the inconsistent feeding herds, in the herds that have a lot of changes uh, in the ration that uh, where the forage composition is not very constant. Uh, those herds usually also have a lower margin over feed cost just because the uh, it's not optimal because we keep stressing the cows a little bit to readapt her to the new ration that changes a bit every day. The top performing herds will be way more consistent and their line, we, we have graphical lines in our reports, but their line for the, the fatty acid profiles will be very constant unless they do a, an important change in the ration. If we look at it on the cow side, I think there's a huge uh, level of information in how widely apart from each other the cows are. So if all my cows in a pen are very, very uniform, then I'm controlling and I have an optimal ration for that group of cows. If they are very heterogeneous, I might have some competition. I have some cows who benefit a lot, but some others who do have negative impacts of, of that housing or that ration. So I think that also provides a level of information to help optimize, to see whether we need to act at the ration level because it's affecting the whole group, or if we need to work at the competition at the feed bunk, for example, because it's affecting some cows more than others. So that's a different level of information that we can get from, from combining uh, the cow data to the bulk tank information. So a variation in our milk fat profile can be indicate, an indication of that variation in our management, in our ration. It's just raising that flag that we need to investigate further. Exactly. And I think when we have uh, frequent data, um, I'll just give you an example. We've seen some herds where every 14 days we would get a similar pattern in the milk fatty, milk fatty acid profile. By digging into it, we realized that it was always on a weekend that the fat test was lower and some fatty acid pro some profile was lower. So by digging further, we realized that it was on the weekend that the farmer was doing the ration and he didn't like to pick up the refusals as much as the employee did because he was told to do it. So we can discover things, right? That it's instead of just being something on paper, I think if we use the milk, we're using an animal response to how she handles what we're providing her. Um, so I think that's that's where it's interesting because we use, we use that animal response to better understand how she optimized the ration and the environment we provided her. And as we pay attention to that, we can learn and we can adapt to improve the situation on the farm. Interesting. Thank you. So in a few of your previous answers as well, you've alluded to rumen health. And having done extensive research on B vitamins as well and dairy cows, can you help us explain, can you help us understand or explain the link between B vitamins and fatty acids? Um, I think, uh, to my knowledge, there hasn't been too much specific research combining the two together. I think that's a very interesting area to explore. Um, I think if we take one step back and look at the whole picture, um, rumen health, optimizing the bacterial populations we have in there and making sure that this is all functioning well, should also be reflected in the de novo synthesis, right? Because then the cow can use the ration properly, function properly. But on top of that, she also has all the metabolites and all the nutrients she requires to maximize performance. So if she is healthy and performing, obviously all the rest will be reflected together. So um, 
it will be interesting to link the two together on very specific studies. But, uh, you know, logically speaking, it's very difficult to estimate uh, the B vitamins in the milk by, let's say, infrared spectro spectroscopy. Sorry, <laughs> uh, uh, there's been some trials to do that. It's not very specific because it's very small molecules. Uh, but could, for example, the de novo fatty acids be some proxy for those types of interesting metabolites to monitor specifically in early lactation, I'll say, when that critical period and make sure that everything is optimized. I think those are all interesting areas that still need to be uh, investigated a little bit more. And the way to do it is quite easy, right? It's just a, uh, let's do a before and after and see how it works. Um, we've noticed herds where, for example, the de novos were really low in early lactation, uh, less than 20% de novo in fresh cows usually causes issues uh, for those cows. If you go and farm and look at the situation and try to understand what is causing that, if you solve the issue, then the following month, you should see that the fresh cows are now higher. And then if you keep improving it, you'll see that those levels go up because the cows will respond to the fact that you brought an answer to their issue. So I think just testing it is probably the best way to understand all that, right? It's have data, test something, keep track of all the changes that you do on farm, and keep monitoring the impact of the changes. That's the best way to learn. And I'll even say that uh, if you can make them move, if you can make the fatty acids change, then you understand how they work. And then you can have fun and uh, have them move the way you want them to move on each specific herd individually. So of course, there's lots of moving pieces, lots of data we need to be aware of. Can you just expand a little on the tools that you have at Lactonet and you, that you offer your producers on how to monitor de novo fatty acids and how they can use that as a decision-making tool or to help them identify possible issues on the yep. farm? Sure. So at Lactonet right now, um, back in 2020, 2019, 2020, I think, uh, we launched what we call ProfiLab. So that's our milk fatty acid monitoring tool. Uh, currently available in Quebec, uh, in some Atlantic provinces, uh, at the bulk tank level for now. We are working with the other Canadian provinces to make it available to the producers out there too. I think it's an interesting tool. I think a lot of nutritionists and farmers are waiting on it. Uh, so meanwhile, they send some bulk tank samples to our lab in Montreal to make sure that they start looking at the data, getting some results and starting to understand the interpretation of it. Um, we do have a prototype for the cow level. Uh, we tested it with some of our advisors, some of our farmers. So 2024 should see that prototype become a real tool. Um, this time, not only in Quebec, but across the country uh, directly. So we're working on installing all our labs across the country to be able to do good fatty acid profile on the infrared machine at the same time as we do fat, protein, lactose, MUN, BHB, somatic cell count and all that. Um, for those, let's say, who would be outside of Canada, there's a lot of labs who offer those options too. My recommendation would be there's there's sometimes a tiny, tiny difference between different companies of analyzers. I would suggest just pick one lab, stick to the same lab so that you can monitor over time. It's the best way to see the impacts of, of the changes that you, you involve. We have some herds that will send a weekly sample in, taken manually, but at least they start mapping the fatty acid profile of their herd and looking into uh, potential solutions and the impact of, of those solutions. So I think any little start uh, is an addition. And instead of just using fat as we used to have, while well, we get more details and we can start working on preventing sometimes the fat drop that might occur because we know ahead of time that something is moving in the herd. So consistency is key, not only for our management, but also for our data collection. Yes, and if you do send analysis, make sure you, you store the data and you put it in a graph, in a whatever, but just put it somewhere so that's easy to use. And if you need help in interpreting it, like just, just give a call, right? We have people, we, we are ready to help. Uh, we're also ready to learn a lot more. I think if more people use it, we can just bring all that knowledge together and keep improving what we all know about uh, the usage of the milk fatty acids. So. Thank you. To wrap it up, can you share your take home messages, maybe three or so, for nutritionists, vets and producers when they think de novo fatty acid synthesis in milk? Sure. Um, so I'll say the first one is uh, that black box. Okay, that's I like to say it like that. We're 
opening up a little bit the fat and understanding better what makes up that fat. So get a deeper insight into your fat test, which is what we're being paid for. Second one, dare to use it. Okay, just just try. Just try something, ask questions, get the information you need to start working with it and try to have that value change. Try to cause an impact on that on that de novo value to make it move and you'll see um, how it can be uh, how it can be powerful for for your herds. And the third one is uh, please any suggestions, any ideas, any questions like you're more than welcome to contact us because as I just said, I think that's how we learn all together and that's how we can make it even better and then share that information back. So any cool ideas are more than welcome. We're ready to test things with you to provide support to help you uh, use it just to make sure that we add to that common knowledge and we do it all together. Thank you, Dr. Sanchi, for being with us today. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you very much. I also want to thank our audience for being with us today. Don't forget to subscribe to Rumination on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or any other platforms. Feel free to visit jeffo.ca for more information. This podcast was brought to you by Jeffo Nutrition, Precision Nutrition, or Growing World. Have a great day.